this is YouTube, guys. Thank you guys for coming. Okay, Lord, we're going to talk a little bit about nutrition. Um, well, a lot about nutrition, a little bit about sleep, and then a little bit just general fitness stuff. And then we're, I mean, with with the small audience, we're going to open up for you guys to ask questions for us, and then you know we'll see if we can answer those best we can. Okay, um, we have like a PowerPoint presentation prepared up here. Uh, we'll just kind of go over some of the the basic big rocks of nutrition, right? Um, are there any areas that you guys are specifically interested in that we can touch on? Just sleep. Okay, we're getting there at the end. Mm-hmm. Sleep and sleep? Well, <laughs> maybe we should fast forward. Well, <laughs> can you guys see that okay, or do we need to dim the lights? I'm good. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm up there, but. Okay, um, we'll start with protein and then we'll work our way down. Okay, so um, protein. Okay, you probably have heard before that it's important, right? Um, but what does it actually do and how does it benefit me? Okay, protein number one is basically a support for tissue structure. So muscle tissue, bone tissue, connective tissue. Um, so tendons, ligaments, things like that. Um, but the protein is the main macronutrient that supports the, the health of those tissues, um, which is super important in sport, right? Um, and also the building of those tissues to you know increase muscle mass, things like that. So we've got kind of, categories here so the post exercise is in the middle um so recommendations for you know after workouts how much protein should i be getting in um and what are what are some good options so you guys can read here uh so leucine rich complete protein so whey milk animal products the animal products being like meat um, and, and dairy and things like that um and then the daily amount okay you guys have probably heard a rule of thumb is like one gram of protein per pound of body weight. So if I was a 150 pound athlete, um, the recommendation would be 150 grams of protein a day, which is a lot. Um, actually, you know, I think most of the research backs up that you can be a little bit less than that and still be good to go, okay? But not a ton less. So um, just kind of right up close to the one gram per pound of body weight, but it doesn't need to be in excess. There's no real extra benefit for, for excess there, okay? Carbohydrates. Okay, do we know what carbohydrates are? Somewhat. Okay, that, think of that as your guys' fuel tank, your gas tank, okay? Um, so the energy for, for high intensity actions, so like in sport, right? Um, so replenishing muscle and liver glycogen supports immune function, reduces risk of overtraining, okay? Very, very important um, that we get carbohydrates in all throughout the day. Um, again, we, you, the car can't run without gas in it, okay? Um, so carbohydrates is your gas. It's your friend, especially if you're competing in sport, okay? Um, I know the keto diet is like a thing, popular, whatnot. Okay, it doesn't really have a large place in athletics because in athletics your your energy requirements are much much higher than you know a general population forty year old soccer mom. Okay, um, so it's it's a little bit different there. But as far as good resources for carbohydrate, okay, for immediately after a workout, something simple. Well, like in our fueling station, we have a lot of good options, right? Bagels. Um, granola bars, milk, things like that. Um, also, well, bagels on the list. Sports drink, okay, so Gatorade, Powerade, um, things like that, or rice or a, a simple granola bar. Throughout the day, uh, mixing high and low glycemic index foods, okay, so you guys know what glycemic index is? So it's like the, the effect um, that a food has on a scale of 1 to 100 on your blood sugar levels, okay? Um, so the higher the glycemic index, the more spike in blood sugar, okay? So mixing, you know, some high glycemic index and low glycemic index foods. So we got whole grains, potatoes, pasta, rice, fruits and vegetables are our main carbohydrate source, okay? Um, so that needs to be consumed on the daily, okay, on the grocery list. And then waters and water and fluid, uh, very simple, okay? When you guys work out, you sweat, um, we need to replace that so we stay hydrated and we can perform, okay? Um, general recommendations throughout the day is 12 plus cups or, or 12 plus bottles of water. Uh, I'd say, you know, up that a little bit more, um, you know, 12 to 16 range. Um, but make sure, you know, after intense activity, we're consuming those water and fluids to, to read up our levels, okay? Um, so this is just kind of stuff to check off if you're eating in the calf or even if you're making meals at home. Um, so the main thing is you want to eat to maintain your energy needs, right? As athletes, you need to eat more than that, you know, general problem that, you know, you hear 2,000 calories a day, but we're burning more of that between practices and, you know, strength training sessions. You're burning more of that between your regular body functions and then your training sessions on top of that, that you probably 
probably need more calories, or not probably, you do need more calories than the average person to, you know, maintain your body weight and to, you know, maintain energy. Um, eat fruits and vegetables, they're a good source of a lot of macro and micronutrients um, that you don't have to, you know, get from supplements. Obviously, there's good places and bad places to get fats and carbs and everything else, and fruits and vegetables um, are a good source of that. They're a healthy source of that. Um, so your food, this can go back to helping with hydration as well. This can help you, again, like Coach O'Connor said, you sweat a lot during training sessions, and this the salt helping salt your food will help you re retain some of the fluid um, that you lose during those training sessions and you know throughout the day. Get plenty of carbs. Again, that's your gas tank. Okay, I know carbs, like you said, the keto diet is rampant. Carbs, they sometimes get a bad rap, and you know. But we're active people, right? We do, we work out throughout the day, all week, whatever else. Carbs are what you need to keep you going. Okay, with our activity level, the healthy amount of carb that you should be intaking, it's not, it's not gonna ruin your image. Okay, carbs are what you need to keep going. It's what you need for energy in the weight room, on the field, on the track, wherever you are. Um, eat lean proteins. Um, obviously, like you said, we need proteins to you know, help build those muscles, help keep those, those structures strong, um, but try to get lean proteins, okay? When you buy chicken, when you buy beef, it'll have your percentage of fat, your percentage of how lean it is. Try to, you know, aim toward the leaner stuff. Um, try to cut out some of that fat that's in some of those beef products and cut off the fat on your chicken before you grill it and all that good stuff. Um, drink at least four cups of water. This would probably just be in a sip, right? Try to aim for that, you know, per meal or post training session. Like you just said, we're trying to aim for upwards of 12 to 16 cups of water per day. So if we can eat or drink four cups of water, um, you know, at a meal or shoot for that and then, you know, drink four more somewhere else throughout the day, you'll be sitting pretty good. Um, and then limit, you know, your high sugar food or high sugar drinks and foods, your fried foods, um, what's that say? Dairy. And then dairy around practice times. Um, Obviously, we just say limit. You're not going to totally avoid these, and you're not going to completely cut these out of your diet because, I mean, you're I know you're athletes, but we're college students. You're young. You're not going to completely cut out soda. You're not going to cut out fried foods. Okay. You like to enjoy foods that you like, okay? and if you don't enjoy food that you like it sometimes, then that ends up you know creating unhealthy habits in the end. So enjoy them when you want, but don't overdo it, and really try to limit it. Next to your water example of yes yeah, snacks. So kind of what you look at here is maybe the first two on the left is probably more uh, a snack versus maybe um, the two on the right or maybe you know after workout maybe you know between meals more or less. So um, we obviously have or sorry first the first uh, the white columns are more you know pre and you know the darker ones are probably right after maybe before uh, between meals. Um, just examples of you know, the amount um, of what we should be getting, you know, making sure that we're uh, you know, hitting that protein we need to to get the minimum amount to preserve tissue, which is typically you know 20 grams of research said, but it can be even a little bit lower. Um, and then uh, just different carbohydrate options, um, you know, where you can actually quantify, okay, am I getting enough or am I even if I'm weight gain or weight loss, these snacks might be a little tailored to weight be what bracket you might be in. Um, next is you know, kind of bridging off of the cafeteria ideas. Um, you know, if I'm sitting down for an actual meal, um, how can I build off of my plate besides just you know steak potatoes? So um, the first, the very top pictures that we have, um, we have steak, we have potato, and broccoli, right? So I'm trying to get like like Coach in the same lean meats carbohydrates and you know some sort of you know vegetable you know that's still going to have uh, protein in it but um, how can we make our plate more colorful and add to that to keep getting um, other vitamins and minerals besides just eating the, the basics so um, the second call we have is, is some chicken it can also be a steak but just another option for uh, you know a lean, a lean meat so um, with that there's uh, a burrito bowl kind of picked out we have some brown rice Another complex carbohydrate. Um, your coach talked about the simple versus complex. Uh, you know, we're, we're sitting down to actually have a meal complex, so kind of we're going for there. Uh, we have also some onions um, and some diced, diced tomatoes. Just other ways we can continue to get vitamins and minerals um, without having to, you know, 
or it might be all our vegetables. Uh, and then with, with some more broccoli, okay? Um, and the very last one, uh, we have pork chop, a sweet potato, another you know, complex carbohydrate option. You know, what you can mix and match these however you want. So if I'm not, if I don't like sweet potatoes or I like baked potato, whatever it is, um, you know, find ways to get those, those staples when you're actually sitting down for a meal. Um, and then we have uh, a salad um, with some actual oil. You know, people talk about you know good fats and bad fats. Um, you know, some cooking. You know, if, uh, cooking is definitely an easy way to you know don't obviously don't don't overdo the, the frying pan or the skillet. You know, when you're cooking meats. Um, but salad is another way to get healthy fats. You know, olive oils um, and, and stuff like that. Also, the feedback on that, guys. Um, I, I feel like people who people think about nutrition, they think about dieting or like punishing yourself and being super strict. Like, common thing, you know, find foods that you guys like that are that have high nutritional value and roll with it. Okay, it doesn't have to be, you know, something that is unenjoyable or, or something that you hate and you're forcing yourself to it. It's not really that serious. Um, but we'll talk briefly on breakfast, okay? Um, breakfast, you probably heard is important, um, which it is. <laughs> um, but also getting protein at breakfast. So this is actually a research study um, comparing a high protein breakfast group and then a low protein breakfast group. Now throughout the day, these groups consume the exact same amount of protein. It was just distributed differently between um, breakfast high or breakfast low. So in the breakfast low group, they ate a lot of protein at dinner time. Okay. Um, long story short, um, results found that after 12 weeks of in this protocol, um, the group that had higher protein at breakfast gained a lot more lean muscle mass throughout the 12 weeks. Um, than the group that had low protein after breakfast, even though they were doing the exact same resistance training program and eating the same amount of protein. Okay, so protein early on in the day is super, super important. Um, here's you know four or five basic options that should be on your breakfast plate every single day. Okay, eggs, number one, um, some type of meat. So bacon, turkey sausage will be better than pork sausage um, if, if possible. So if there's a choice of both, go with the turkey um, if you enjoy turkey. Okay, or, or ham as well. And then yogurt and milk. So some of those basic dairy products um, are good breakfast foods that can that can help kickstart that because we want to support you know a healthy body with muscle mass, right? Um, so getting protein at breakfast is an important part of that. Okay, supplements. Uh, we'll talk briefly on supplements. Okay, generally I'm I'm not really a, a big proponent of it or a big advocate of it, um, but we do want to acknowledge um, some of these. I'll talk about a few of these in more detail, but that there's strong evidence to support their use in athletics, okay? Now, notice this list is not very long, and then there's a lot of mixed or no evidence stuff, and it's basically snake oil trying to get your money. It's not gonna help you, and there's not much research to support it, okay? Um, but we'll, we'll just talk about the green stuff here, okay? Um, so number one up there at the top, uh, we'll talk about caffeine, okay? In moderation, that can be a good thing. Um, in excess is not a good thing, okay? Because um, caffeine, what does caffeine do? It speeds up, it's a stimulant, right? So it speeds up my central nervous system activity, heart rate, things like that, um, which again, in moderation can be a performance enhancer, you know, more power, more strength, um, you know, slower to fatigue through activity. Um, but in excess, number one, you'll build up a tolerance for it, and you're gonna need more and more to get the same effect, which is not really what you're looking for. And then number two, is that it consumed later on in the day could negatively affect your sleep, okay? So um, caffeine's half-life, I believe, is like six hours. So if I consume some caffeine at, let's say, 4 p.m., um, at 10 p.m., half of that caffeine is still in my system, uh, which is gonna delay my sleep onset. And then, you know, so from 10 p.m. and six hours later, that's what, 4 a.m., there's still a quarter of the caffeine in it. So um, just something to think about. Creatine. Um, creatine monohydrate, okay? We cannot give that out to you guys um, as student athletes, but it is legal, healthy, um, you know, proven to be effective and safe. So it's a, a supplement that has a ton of research back behind it on its, on its benefits. Number one, um, you know, with high intensity exercise, getting energy recycled back in, um, that's kind of the main, the main benefit of creatine, okay? Um, and then also, you know, just increasing strength, muscle mass, power output, and then delaying fatigue, okay? All of those things. And then also
also be healthy. You know, there's actual support for, for brain health with creatine and supplementation as well. And then the, the last one I'll touch on is just protein powder or, or protein in general. Okay, we, we kind of talked about that, but in the whey powder form, it's just as effective as, you know, with any lean meats. Um, so utilize that um, and make sure you're getting that. That's a really good, healthy, research-backed um, supplement to, to aid in that. Okay, but we have that. Popular man, time for sleep. <laughs> sleep. Uh, so, um, what we're looking at here is a study looking at um, you know hours per night and some nutrition. So, um, typically, those who have a more nutritious diet are going to have better sleep quality. That's pretty much what we're looking at here. Um, but also, we're also looking at you know injury injury reduction as well because obviously, less sleep we get, more likely we are to get injured. So. Talk about having two equal signs in that formula of just performance, right? So, uh, food is food is fuel, um, and, and if you start thinking about it in that in that case, um, I think that'll really open up some doors and free your mind to make choices and take you know responsibility and feel confident in them, um, and tr truly uh, use it to actually build um, off of just your performance. Um, so, those who met, you know, the, the recommended eight hours sleep were six to one percent less likely to get injured. Um, and you know the study that you know says 18 percent don't even get that. And I'm sure it might even be higher. This is just 340 people, especially, especially in 340 people. You know? In America, I'd say 60 plus percent of athletes don't need to sleep that much. So I don't know if Scandinavia prioritizes their sleep quite a bit more than we do, but we think we can shortchange it and do crazy stuff, and it's just not true. Yeah. <laughs> and then you know fruits, veggies, and fish, um, especially in Scandinavia, we eat fish. <laughs> uh, 64% less likely to get injured, um, you know, balancing, you know, some of those, some of those nutrients. Um, so definitely goes hand in hand. So nutrition, better nutrition, better sleep, better sleep, less likely to get injured. Yep. Uh, this is just another study um, kind of tagging off the better sleep, less likely to get injured. I mean, you can see for yourself, the, I mean, it might be a little bit hard to see um, with the lighting and the colors, but basically across the bottom is how many hours of sleep you get, so it goes five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then rate of injury. So we can see that at five, six hours of sleep per night, there's a much higher rate of injury than when you get down to like eight or nine hours. Um, and the thing over there just says, if you get less than eight hours of sleep, you have a 1.7 times greater risk, so almost twice as, twice as a risk of getting injured than if you just get the proper amount of sleep. So I feel like sometimes when we think about injury, we think about, you know, doing PT, doing your exercises, you know, make sure we're training, make sure we're doing all this stuff. But like sleep is something that is incredibly easy to do, um, takes no effort, no thought. Um, and I feel like it is the least incorporated thing in a training program, but it can, act, it can turn out to be incredibly effective at um, preventing injury. Yeah, I think, I mean, to pick back on that guys, I, I think that sleep is probably the lowest hanging fruit there is. Anyone can utilize it, capitalize on it, but it's the least, I mean, it's, it's just not utilized well at all. Um, so, you know, I, I talk a lot of times with my teams on, you know, where are your margins at, right? So I compete in sports, um, you know, our teams in your conference practicing their sport as well. Yeah, um, our teams in the, other, in the conference lifting weights. Yep. So. Your margins aren't there. It's the quality of your practice, the quality of the weight session, but also the recovery, ding, ding, ding. Nobody gets the right amount of sleep. Well, I shouldn't say nobody, but uh, the, the minority uh, gets eight plus hours of sleep and then has a good nutritious diet. So you take care of those two big rocks, you're making up those margins a lot. Not only, you know, just, just with yourself and, and building healthy habits, but also your competition in athletics. So let's get to the nitty gritty of, of can you guys read that? Okay. Well, we're gonna go one at a time. Okay, you can read the big numbers, right? Number one, number two. Um, so this is nine points to building good sleep habits. So good sleep hygiene. Okay, we'll start with number one. Um, top left corner here. Quiet environment. Okay, so eliminating any noise, distraction. Um, you guys don't sleep with the TV on, do you? Okay, that's a good first step. Okay, quiet environment. Um, now, white noise is fine. You know, if, if you've got a fan going that's, you know, consistent, um, I would say that that, that would be okay. 
um, but just making sure we get as quiet of an environment as possible. Number two, uh, your room temperature, okay? That's in Celsius, so which probably doesn't mean much to you guys, um, but that kind of converts to around, give or take 65 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, should be the room temperature, which is pretty cold. Okay, well, not cold, but cool. Okay, we want a cool environment to sleep in, and that's the recommended temperature to get the best results. So a nice cool environment, give or take 65 degrees, um, whichever you're more comfortable with, okay? Number three, ensure that bedding clothing does not cause an environment that's too hot, right? So kind of getting back to the cool environment. Um, you don't want, you know, a ton of, a ton, a ton of blankets that, you know, really heat you up and have you sweating through the nighttime, okay? We wanna make sure, uh, yes, that we're comfortable, but we're not overheated. Um, number four, sleep routine, okay? We are creatures of habit and, and our circadian rhythm is the same. It operates on the same, you know, light, darkness, rhythm uh, throughout the day. So getting to bed at a consistent time, waking at a consistent time. So I'm not, you know, let's say I've got workouts in the morning before class one morning, and then the next night we don't have workouts, so I stay up till 3 a.m. And then the next, you know, it's just kind of like a constant varying cycle. It's not ideal, okay? So if you can get a consistent bedtime, say, you know, 11 o'clock, and I wake up, you know, around seven, there's my eight hours and I'm you know, prepared and ready for the day, okay? So be as consistent as possible with that. Number five, um, avoid caffeine. Okay, we kind of touched on that earlier. Uh, caffeine, big time caffeine, okay. Um, caffeine's okay, like we said, it could be a performance enhancer in moderation, but careful with caffeine into the late afternoon, evening time. Cut it out. Um, so think before noon, caffeine in moderation, okay? Anything outside of that, um, no bueno, okay? Number six, um, avoid the use of computer, TV, tablet, anything like that that's getting blue light into my brain, okay? Blue light equals no good sleep, okay? Um, so anything you can do to get that blue light off or diminished, okay? And start resetting that circadian rhythm like we talked about. Um, you know, on iPhones, there's actually a setting. You can go into your settings and then um, go to, I think it's, it's called night mode. Yeah, it's, night mode it's like an automated sleep setting. So like with my phone, um, at 9 p.m. every night, it switches it, no, blue light off and it's like a reddish tint, um, which eliminates the blue light. Like I think it's helped my sleep ever since I switched from Android over to iPhone. I was a late switcher, guys. Um, I feel like that oh. in general probably just helped your sleep. Yeah. You don't have the, user, right? yeah, yeah. the round of Android. <laughs> <laughs> But no, it's, it's cool. It's cool that they have that type of stuff out there. Um, it's very easy to just click a few buttons and now I've improved my sleep, I improved my performance, I improved my health. Boom, boom, boom. A few clicks of a button. It does not take that much effort, okay? Um, <laughs> number seven, napping not later than mid-afternoon. Again, staying on that rhythm. So if I take a nap at like 8 p.m., uh, my body's now highly confused on what time of day it is, where am I at, what country am I in, everything, okay? So making sure that if you're napping, earlier than mid-afternoon, so anytime, you know, kind of in the middle of your sleep-wake cycle, um, which for most people is probably between that 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. range, okay? Um, number eight, at least seven hours of sleep, but we know from the previous research that we talked about, eight hours is really the, the real magic ticket, so I would, I would bump that up to eight, to be quite honest. And then number nine, ensure dark room uh, with no light source present, okay? Um, yeah. Make sure no light is getting into your room. Uh, try to minimize that as, as best you can um, and, and keep that light off. Now, also kind of to piggyback on that, in the morning time, get light into your room immediately, okay? Um, you know, we wanna get that circadian rhythm kick-started in the morning time. Don't lay in bed with the lights off, scroll into your phone for 45 minutes when you wake up. Um, get the light exposure immediately upon waking. Also, I'd add to that list, um, don't do, you know, a bunch of activities like, like homework or Netflix or, you know, things that you're doing hours and hours and hours in your bedroom or in your bed, okay? You want to associate your bed environment with sleep. So if, if I'm in my bed environment, you know, for four hours a day uh, while I'm awake, then now my body is starting to really confuse that environment, right? Our, our bodies are crazy like that. They associate, you know, given environments with a certain feeling. You guys feel a little bit different in the classroom than you do in the weight room or um, at the cafeteria, right? It's all it's all a different.
different different exposure there. Yeah. First thing will be consistency. I think one of the I think we kind of can we can agree on this. When people ask us, you know, they've never really you know, tried to a stretch or exercise or just ask, what's the best thing I can do to get in shape? Well, pick your most favorite thing to do, biking, treadmill, yoga, kettlebell class, whatever it is, just be consistent with it. And and do that, you know, three times a week. I think that's you know an underrated thing about people think there's this perfect magic pill that if I do this, if I do this, I'll get results. No, it's it's you doing something quality that you enjoy that you're consistent about doing all the time, and, and make sure it's something that, that you love and enjoy doing, and you'll start to see results. Not just you know physically, but emotionally, spiritually. Because I know that you know if I go for a, a five mile bike ride, you know for week one, you know then I maybe try to go six, you know try to seven, you know. Build on top of that and just, you know, stick with one thing. Don't try to do too many things at once because that complicates a lot of things. And, and the quality of that, you know, if I'm, if I'm always feeling wrecked, you know, doing something or if I'm not feeling like I'm doing something right, um, always try to make sure it's, it's done with quality, um, you know, not necessarily have to run a marathon by, you know, the first week, but try to gradually build to make, well, set some goals for yourself, stuff like that. Uh, next is, Trying to combine best the best of both worlds, the best we can uh, for you guys is pick some sort of resistance training, um, ground based. Uh, you're on your feet, whether that's you know weightlifting, um, you know walking, uh, jogging, uh, once stuff that you're on your feet, your body has to support um, your body weight. That's going to help your joints. Um, you want to do floor range of motion too. Um, aerobic training for heart health, you know. You know, with certain sports, you get that different quality. You know, some sports like, you know, track and cross country and soccer might get a little bit more aerobic activity than, let's say, um, you know, maybe a, maybe a football team or a, a baseball team or a softball team where they're you know, doing you know, maybe shorter sprints. Um, but just going out for a 30 minute walk, that's gonna help anybody. That's not gonna ruin anything. That's not gonna hurt your day. Um, shoot, even multiple 10 minute, 10 minute walks throughout the day. Um, you may not necessarily have to classify it as aerobic, but you know, accumulating minutes of just general activity throughout the day, um, the blood's flowing, the heart heart's up a little bit. Um, next is recovery. So um, it's great that we want to be uh, gung ho to try to get in shape and try to be the, have the best version of ourselves. Um, we gotta make sure we're taking the appropriate steps, like we said the whole time about prioritizing recovery. Um, you know, what nutritional value did I have? How how was my sleep? You know, did I give 110 percent? whatever exercise or watch that day or activity that I committed myself to doing um, at a very high level. And, and that goes with anything, not just exercise in life, but your work life too. Um, am I able to shut off you know, the work or the homework switch when, I, when it's time to decompress or when I'm home or when I'm with family? Uh, that's been a great one as well. And then just hold yourself to a high standard. You know, everyone's got different goals in life, um, your ethics, your morals, whatever it is. Um, but try to, you know, find support system that helps you go in a, in a positive and you know, linear direction as best you can. Um, you know, whether that's a, a class that you take or a group or a club you're a part of, you know, the teams that you guys are a part of, um, that foster growth. Um, that, you know, try to hold yourself accountable to, I'm, I'm going to do this today, I'm going to accomplish this today. Um, and like I said, just hold yourself to a high school. Let's open it up for questions, that's it. <laughs> I guess whether anything you guys really want. Yeah. So you're going for a walk three, four times a week, kind of useful on these elite levels. Yeah, I mean, that can be a soothing activity for, for a lot of people, absolutely. I mean, I wouldn't be chugging up, you know, somewhere in Colorado. No, I would, yeah, not any <laughs> strenuous, you know, not like the hill north of the Cardinal Park. <laughs> What comments do you guys have about oversleep and how that affects daily life? Oversleep? Yeah. I, I mean, I don't want to speak for these guys, but I think oversleep would fall in the category similar to like overhydration, meaning it's highly rare and it's much more common to undersleep and underhydrate than it is to do vice versa. Um, but I mean, in excess, yeah, anything's, anything's not good in excess. So. But I mean, I don't know, 
was tough because you know the the apex predators in the animal kingdom sleep about 20 hours a day and then they go out and kill stuff and they're pretty violent creatures um so <laughs> i think oh, oh what is this i think that in general more sleep the better but as long as it doesn't cross the threshold of you know becoming lazy and unproductive I, I would say, I'm guessing, I'm not sure where that question is coming from. Maybe is it like weekend, maybe? Yeah, I, I know yeah. more like the balance, I guess. That. No, yes. yeah, yeah, I got a text. So, no. <laughs> I would almost say, um, that would probably be like, what does your five day school kind of week look like? Um, now, I doubt most of us are getting 10 hours, seven days a week, um, but, I would definitely try to, as opposed to getting like, you know, five, five, four, three, five hours of sleep, you know, can I raise that half an hour or an hour on those days to where I'm not have to get 10 or even 12 hours to mess up my sleep schedule? Um, but I mean, there's a bell curve for everything. You know, too much is bad, unavoidable isn't enough. Um, but definitely try to find the balance because Staying up till 3 a.m. and then sleeping till noon is definitely not going to set me up for success for Monday. Uh, 
different like black beans, baked beans, uh, inside that, or like, um, you know, having a bag of potatoes, like, you know, a five pound bag of potatoes that might last you two weeks, you know, having, you know, one or two potatoes with you every night with your meal, um, that's all pretty cheap. Like, I feel like anything I've really said right now has been terribly expensive. Right. Um, maybe one or two, um, you know, pork chops, a hamburger, you know, making your own hamburger. Um, and I'm trying to think of another staple of mine, just within the, the those, those trying days. Uh, but, you know, loaf of, you know, loaf of bread, you know, cheap as you can get 80 cent. I don't, you know, I necessarily need to get the $3 Roman meal or, you know, honey, honey oat, you know, uh, and, you know, living by myself and doing that, usually, you know, 30 to 40 bucks. Um, and, you know, I always got like the 60 thing of, 60 count of eggs, you know, usually at Walmart. Um, but, I mean, none of that really required a ton of, like, prep. Um, just cooking on the weekends, I think, you know, you, you get your, you know, your, you know, your, where your breakfast is coming from, you know what your lunch is, and maybe, you know, plan out when I lay out the meat at night or something like that. Um, I don't know. That's, yeah. I mean, it's not, I mean, meal prepping is budget friendly. Yeah. What's not budget friendly is jumping meal to meal, not knowing where it's coming from, and then going, you know, out to eat, fast food, whatever. So when you meal prep, when you shop at a grocery store, grocery stores are not very expensive. Okay, food gets expensive when you get it elsewhere. So at the grocery store, um, and even you know buying off-brand material as long as the quality doesn't dip down, I recommend that. So it's yeah, it's, it's not too expensive. Food at food at a grocery store is not bad. Although meat prices are kind of I don't know, not my favorite right now, but chicken is generally pretty cheap.